Preparing the hemodialert for hemodialysis. The first thing to do is to check that the battery in the unit is working as it should be. So, plug the sensor into the unit and you should hear a long beep. You now can be reassured that the battery life is adequate. The next thing to do is to check that the sensor is working. Take an isopropyl alcohol swab and wipe the sensor with it. The alarm should trigger if the sensor is working. That's the beeping that you want to hear. Disconnect the sensor to stop the alarm. You now know that the sensor is ready for use during the dialysis session. Once the fistula site has been prepared, position and fix the sensor in place before you start the dialysis machine. As you can see, the arterial and venous needles are in place. Just place the sensor underneath the venous cannulation site. It is being positioned here with the intent of picking up any blood that might drip from the needle, or should the venous needle become dislodged during treatment. Locating it below the venous cannulation site allows any blood leakage from the area to be sensed and the alarm will trigger to alert the patient and staff about a possible issue. Stick the sensor in place with some tape over the center. It doesn't need to be a lot. You don't want the patient to have more tape on their arm than necessary. It should be just enough to secure it during treatment. Finally, clip the arm unit to the patient's clothing and the dialysis treatment can begin. Sometimes you might find that if a patient tends to sweat during dialysis, the perspiration may trigger a false alarm just wrap a thin layer of gauze around the sensor before attaching it in place. This can help prevent false alarms interrupting the dialysis treatment and the peace and quiet of the unit and patient. If during treatment the hemodialate starts alarming once every 10 seconds rather than continuously, this is the alarm low battery alert. This means that the batteries need replacing as soon as possible. Should there be a blood leak, the hemodialate will respond in this way. Once a blood leak has been detected by the hemodialert, it's time to check the cannulation sites for any leakage around the needle. Remove the hemodialert sensor and take appropriate action to curtail any blood loss or any further blood loss. If you plug in the sensor and you don't hear that reassuring beep that lets you know that the battery is working, this means the batteries have expired. It's time to change the batteries. To replace the batteries, open the unit by inserting a coin or any thin rigid item between the two raised areas on the side of the alarm and twist it. This will cause the alarm casing to come apart and reveal the battery housing. With the device open, you will see the A76 batteries. Carefully remove the batteries. You can use the coin to lever one out and once you've got one out, the others can be easily removed. When you have four new batteries, there's a guide on the bottom of the battery housing which shows which way they should face. Just be careful that you get the pluses and minuses the right way round. The easiest way to insert the batteries is to insert three batteries first, then take the fourth battery and insert it between the second and third batteries. Finally, close the alarm casing. Once the batteries have been changed, Test the alarm to make sure the batteries are in the right way. There's the reassuring beep you are looking for. What happens if the sensor stops working? If you wipe the sensor with the isopropyl alcohol wipe and the alarm does not trigger, it's time to dispose of the sensor. Sensors are consumable items and will wear out over time. It is recommended they are replaced every six months. So dispose of any sensor which is not working and use the spare sensor provided with the alarm. Plug it in, wipe it with the isopropyl alcohol wipe and listen for the reassuring long beep.